Good Monday morning, everyone. It is coffee and questions time. So uh, first things first, I want to let you guys know we were going to do the rapid resizer uh, kind of thing this morning, but we're still kind of learning on that. We know kind of some basics, but we're still kind of tweaking that and learning it. But we'll be doing that video very soon where we'll kind of get in front of the computer and going through the whole um, or as much as we know at the time when we make the video on that rapid resizer, but it's pretty darn cool. It's a cool website. Go check it out. So um, I wanted to answer the question, the question that Vicky had at the very end of last Friday's video, and then I, I've gotten two or three comments on it. The, um, the sanding sealer on the pine, this was the transfer process that we did on Friday's video, last Friday's video. This one was with the uh, the heat transfer paper and you can see it left uh, a little bit of residue on there But honestly, it makes no difference at all. The router base just slides right over that I don't have any issues with that at all. Uh, and then this one was with the laser printer um, And obviously it's uh, you know both of them using that heat transfer tool go back and watch Friday's video and you'll see But anyway, both of these now have sanding sealer on them. I brush a coat of sanding sealer on both these pieces and you can see they didn't smear, there's no um, adverse effect whatsoever. So, uh, now I still, one thing that I haven't done is I haven't tried uh, putting these transfer processes on uh, pine that has sanding sealer on it. That's my next experiment. Almost lost that, it almost fell right into my coffee. So that will be the next thing. I haven't done that yet, but I'll be doing that soon. And uh, we'll see if this transfer process, both of these, will go over pine that already has sanding sealer on it. I don't know that yet, but I'll be getting to that. But worst case scenario, if you have bare pine and put your transfer on, you can put sanding sealer over the top of it and you'll be good to go. Anyway, and the, why I do that is to keep, when you do spray the black for uh, either layout letters or after you're done carving, spraying the black in there, you want to eliminate the bleeding. Any, any of you that have been watching for a while, you know that's the reason I use sanding sealer on pine because it has a tendency to bleed that black, either the black primer or the black ink. So that's the reason I put sanding sealer on my pine. All right, I wanted to clear that up. All right, so first question of the day, uh, Jack Seller. He is a brand new, um, brand new sign carver, and he's wondering about the speed uh, of the router uh, for different depths, different bits. So what he's referring to, this is again the DWP. Now some of these trim routers are variable speed, some of them aren't. To me it makes no difference at all. I don't use this variable speed, I run it full speed all the time no matter what I'm cutting. Whether I'm cutting walnut or cedar, whether I'm using a profile bit, whether I'm using the, the spiral upcut bit and cutting shapes with my guide bushings, doesn't matter. I always run this thing at full speed. I can't imagine ever running it at any other speed other than full speed unless maybe I was cutting aluminum or something, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, I just, I just run it at full speed all the time. But that's a, a common question that I get a lot from brand new people that end up with a, uh, with a router. Now this is the trim router, but even if you have a Craftsman or a Skill or a Ryobi, whatever, if they're variable speed, from my perspective, full speed all the time. 22 to 35,000, whatever it is, run at full speed. That's where I'm always at as far as, um, the router speed. So, um, I, I, you know, I know that I just, I get that question a lot from brand new people. So, um, anyway, I hope that, uh, kind of settles that. Okay. So I had another guy that actually, I was talking to this guy on the phone the other day and it was really funny. I, I just brought in a sample, an old, this is a really old sample sign that I had kicking around. This thing's probably 15, 20 years old. It, in fact, it's, you know, clear redwood, so you can tell how old it is. Beat up. Huh? Yeah, it's beat up. It's been kicking around. It's all, it's split on the end, and the, the tip is chipped off, but it still looks pretty decent. Anyway, so uh, what he was saying is that when he's making his outline or his outset of his cloud, his, <laughs> it was so funny, because he said, I'm making the cloud and his humps look like waves. <laughs> so 
I just thought that was really funny. So when you're making these clouds, guys, uh, and, he, and he wanted to know how to eliminate that or how to, how to fix it. If you're, number one, I don't know if you're using our bits, but if you're using our 90 degree bit, it, it's not the bit. I'm pretty sure of that unless it's really, really dull, but they stay sharp a long time. So it could be the grain of the board. This thing would cut like butter. But if, you, if you're cutting a, a board that's maybe pine, that's got a tough grain going through it, or even cedar that has a tough grain, you might have an issue with that. So here's what I do. Anytime you're having a tough time holding a line and it seems hard to carve, go multiple depths on it. So what I told him is back it off. He was going about a quarter of an inch deep. Back it off and take it in two cuts. Take an eighth of an inch at a time. The less wood that you're taking out at a time, the more chance you're going to have of having control of that router and that the, when it hits the grain, it won't take off on you. So, you know, take your time. Make multiple cuts at different depths if you need to. Even if you need to make it in three depths. But Generally speaking, when, when your bit takes off, and again, if, you, if you've got the right bit and if, you, if you've got a good piece of material, even if it is grainy, it's not too wet, there's a lot of factors that come into play, but let's assume your material is good and you've got a good bit, uh, hopefully our 90 degree bit when you're making your cloud. Um, if those if those factors are handled, then the next piece is um, is you you know you just got a board that's got a, a weird grain in it and it wants to follow that grain rather than following the cloud that you want to make. Make mul multiple depths. Take your time. Make multiple depths. Um, and I, yeah, and that was that was pretty much it. Um, the other thing that you can do is draw it out with a. I, I don't when I do this, I don't draw it because I've carved hundred thousand of these, so I don't draw it anymore. I look at the letter and just follow where I know want I want it to be. But you can draw it out with a uh, you know a, a white uh, pencil or even a pencil. Just draw your cloud out and try and follow the line. So I think that will hopefully help him on that. Um, oh, the other thing, since I had this here, uh, the color on this, you can see it's, it's somewhat faded. Um, but uh, with these, when you're on the color on this rose was done with a, um, with a Sharpie, or these are just little permanent markers. These aren't Sharpies. These are a different brand. But, um, and I didn't go over this with you, babe. I'm sorry. If, if these start to fade on you a little bit, all you need to do really is just go over them again. It's cool whether it's got a finish on it. And I think this has like, a, you know, two or three coats of clear on it. But you can just go over it again. That's a neat thing. If it fades, it's super easy just to just to go over them again. That's just something since I brought this in and I thought, well, you know, I can just show these uh, using these Sharpies again. These aren't Sharpies. These are just permanent markers. But I like the chisel tip. This is the tip that I really like. I don't know if you probably... Maybe you can see it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the chisel tip. That's the one I really like. You can see this stem is really faded. And just so anybody asks, that's an old rose. We do not have that anymore. Oh yeah, this is the one that we did years and years ago. But we do have a new rose that looks, you know, that is kind of similar to this. It just stands straight up. But anyway, um, in fact, you know, I could do a video on that rose that we have, that new one that you made. And this this stem and these leaves, honestly, I just draw those by hand. Mm. Yeah, I, you could use the head of that rose. I ought to make a video on that. If you guys want to see that, let me know. Because it's just stuff that I did so many. You know, I used to carve 20 of these things a day when I was up in Oatman or at my, uh, you know, at a place uh, where I'm carving on site. All right, sign carvers of the day. This one's really cool. Chuck McEnemy. Mc, excuse me, McMenemy. <laughs> I think I showed one of his the other day on uh, on that yeah, big we group. Yeah, struggled with his name. Yeah. Too. McMenemy. And that's the shape of South Carolina, by the way. That's what that shape is. Pretty cool. Great job. And let's see. Barbara Stone. Now this one is kind of, the, the inset letters are a little tough to read, but it's, um, what is it, uh, Chief Master Sergeant, I think, or Chief Petty Officer. I'm not, I, gosh, now I can't turn it around. 
But it, it was for a military guy. I can't see it. The, the camera hopefully will show it. But great job, Barbara. It was uh, Chief Petty Officer, Senior Chief Petty Officer. I'm, I apologize for that. So, uh, but uh, that cool logo there, I, li I love it. And one more, I'm just gonna add an extra one. This one's really cool. Jeff Altis, Altis's daughter, 12 years old, carved this with a trim router, probably with, you know, like the little DWP 611. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. 12 years old she carved this great job great job i i don't even know actually what jeff's daughter's name is i didn't write it down here so um anyway uh thanks guys i hope this helps um again thanks for all the thumbs up and the and the likes and all the support um we'll have another coffee and questions on wednesday uh going over some more stuff so keep sending the questions keep sending me pictures we'll do another big version of the um uh, sign carvers of the day sometime soon and we'll have a demo on uh, next Friday is yeah this coming Friday is Good Friday so we'll have a demo uh, on Good Friday and um, we're coming into Easter week so I uh, hope everybody had a great Palm Sunday that was yesterday um, bad stuff happening overseas um, but anyway I um, hope everybody has a great week and we will see you guys on Wednesday have a good one bye bye